my first PC build go from this to this and this. <sighs> Am I supposed to put the motherboard in first? Shit. I didn't give up. It is what it is. I'm learning. Learning is a. Uh, learning is a. Uh, life experience. <coughs> So today all the parts arrive, so this is gonna be my first PC building. I am very very excited but I'm scared at the same time because maybe I might broke something. The case I will be using is from NZXT H5 Flow. It looks minimalistic and white, very nice. And here are the parts I will be using in my build. It's not the best parts out there but if you have a little bit more to spend, better to go with the RTX 4070. I will probably stick to it until I upgrade it. The graphic card looks very sexy. It will look nice with the white theme I'm looking for. Now we start with the PC building. First and foremost, CPU. Pretty easy and straightforward. You just need to match the triangle simple with the same one on the motherboard. Lose that bad boy down. And press it down. I think I just finished installing my first speed CPU. But I made an error right away. I shouldn't touch the surface. Next is removing the SD heatsink on top of the board and chuck the SD in. Just need to screw it back in. Simple as that. I'm not even sweat. Look at me, Whoa. look at me. Full of confidence. Going on, I install the RAM and it's best to check the motherboard manual for the best memory configuration or you're gonna lose some performance. Like everyone said, you cannot get it wrong. If you put it in the other way, it won't go in. I think that's it for the motherboard. So far so smooth. Put the screw on the radiator. Then do, do the installation on the motherboard, okay. Then the fan and radiator, here I put it upside down and I realized there's something wrong so I flip it back. Yeah, the cool air should be sucked in to cool the radiator, not going backward. You know what I mean? After that, I just screw the remaining component on the CPU cooler. Here's the thing. I don't know why I think that would be a good idea to screw the cooler in first instead of the motherboard. No idea. So I have to unscrew it, check the motherboard in with the help of a very big manual from NZXT case to find the compatible screw. Then I screw the cooler back in, again, and bada bing bada boom. And the thermal paste and screw the cooler on top of the CPU, perfect. Easy. And I realized something. So I don't think I have enough real estate to work with because all the connector, some of it is on top. So probably I have to remove the, the radiator again. Oh my god. OMG. I was thinking about removing the whole chassis of both again, but I'm big brain. Yes, big brain. So I just removed the fan screw and problem solved. Phew. Oh, and power supply. It's a nice white color. Looks like it was made specifically for this case. All I need to do is to screw it in and plug the right cable for the HDD. After that, chuck it on the holder and that is all the components for the case. Time for the fun stuff, the cables. It took me extremely long time and a lot of confusion to plug all the cable in the correct place. By the mean of the correct place, I didn't know if it's correct or not by then. I was afraid that I might plug something in the incorrect slot and might kill the board. At one point I just start to believe and I just do it without any further help from Google. Now I will fast forward the cable process and we can just relax. Finally, the GPU. I just remove a few brackets on the case, install the GPU in, re-screw everything, and quickly bring it to my room for testing. Okay, I, I was so afraid if end. anything went wrong. If it, if it is, I have to troubleshoot the whole thing again, which takes a lot of time. <sighs> well, 
but it turned on. I was extremely satisfied. Holy shit. And quickly go to the BIOS and check if everything is there. Then I get to the window and the driver installed. Seems like it's working fine. Final step, putting the front glass, back panel back. By the way, that's my cable management. Not the best, but it's okay for now. No one looking at it. And here's the PC. Thanks for watching the video so far. If you enjoy it, please consider subscribing. That will help my channel a lot. Thanks again. Okay, the benchmark. Both the CPU and GPU are not that power hungry at all. On Cinebench, CPU single core score almost 2000 and multi core roughly 19000. Damn, the chipset is pretty fast. But of course, it's a little bit costlier than all the options. You have to buy the whole package like AM5 motherboard, DDR5 RAM to be compatible with it, which is costlier. For God of War, I tested it at Ultra preset. It fell in between 62 65 FPS. The power consumption is lower than I thought. Not extremely high FPS, but it's good enough to have smooth experience. For Forza Horizon 5, at extreme preset, it's a consistent 95 to 100 FPS. Very beautiful graphic. But sometimes I get the message, not enough VRAM. Yeah, I expect that because the graphic card only have 8 VRAM. It's good enough for me, but if you have more money to spend, consider 4070, the RTX one, and up, which have more VRAM. Same for The Last of Us, which can eat a lot VRAM when you tune up all the settings to the max. The game stay around 72-75 FPS, but if you turn on DLSS, and then the FPS improve to about 100 FPS, I think. Overall, the card is powerful enough to play most of the AAA game at 1440p high setting. That is everything for now. See you on the next one. Bye.